Thank you very much, Adrian, and good morning. So, who of you have heard about the new EU data protection regulation called GDPR? I want to see your hands. Wow. And how many of you are currently involved in the preparations to become GDPR compliant? Okay, still a few hands. Excellent. So, in the next couple of minutes, I'd like to share some of our findings and best practices with you, which will help you on your GDPR journey. And as many of you know, the current EU directive about data privacy dates back to 1995, a time where companies like Google, AWS, Salesforce, or Dropbox did not even exist. So it's really hopelessly out of date. And GDPR is that update. And it basically unifies the data protection regulation laws in the European Union. And this is particularly beneficial if your organization is operating in multiple countries. But we believe it will not only have a European effect, but it will have a global effect because every company in the world who processes European citizen data will need to comply with GDPR. So it's a really massive thing. And it's going to start in May next year, which means basically last week in 12 months. So this is not a, a long time frame, and it was good to see that, that many of you are currently aware of it. Getting ready is really important because the new regulation can cause your company a lot of trouble. It implements fines up to 4% of your company's global revenues. That means it elevates data privacy breaches on the same level as money laundering or bankruptcy. But it's not only about financial damages that can occur. Because every data breach you're going to have after May next year needs to be reported to the regulators and it will become public. So a dramatic uh, um, challenge for your re reputation as well. And we also expect some blaming and shaming after May next year, not only by the regulators, but also by activists who push this forward. And in extreme cases, it's also possible that with GDPR, your company will be banned from pr uh, processing personal data. So it really is a game changer, and Cartman's attitude is not really recommendable. So you might be wondering what's new, particularly when you are from Germany or from the Netherlands, from countries that already have quite a strict uh, data privacy law in place. And I've highlighted a few of the key requirements from our perspective. And I want to you know, talk a, few, a bit about a few of them. And first of all, there's the data minimization principle. That means your company is no longer allowed to capture any kind of personal data that it might use in the future. You really need to justify why you are collecting certain data points, and you have to justify that in an audit as well. So it's really about minimizing the personal amount of data. And there's also the right to be forgotten, which means if a subject tells you, please delete my data, you have to do that, and you have to prove that you did it. And that can have a really big effect on your business processes. And in addition, a very strong regulation is the data protection by design and by default principle. And I know we have some developers here today as well. If you are developing a mobile application, you really have to think about privacy right from the beginning. So these requirements really are a big change. And no matter where your company comes from, you really have to look into the details and the criteria that comes with it. So we have seen there will be quite a change coming from the new data protection regulation. And it will be effective because it comes with teeth. But at the same time, we live in a digital economy and in a digital society. So data is really a commodity for us. And it's everywhere. So there's no way that you can get around GDPR. But what really qualifies as personal data? 
There's some obvious things like name of your partner organization, contact information of your customer, or religion of your employee. But there are also some less obvious data points, like purchases a customer made, or devices an employee owns, or if he's a member of a trade union. And every company has some of these data points about their customers, their employees, or their partners. And the point is, with GDPR, the term personal data is much broader than it used to be in the EU directive from 1995. And that means you have to re-identify what personal data you have in your organization and how you're going to protect it. And as you all know, mobile, of course, plays an important role for employees to access corporate data. And on average, 30% of the workforce has access to customer data via mobile devices. And this is increasing. But increasing is also that mobile attacks are getting under attack more and more. And in fact, we've done a study in Germany last year, and we found out that one out of four companies had a financial damage of more than 100,000 euros in the last 12 months due to mobile security incidents. And this fine and this damage, of course, will increase when GDPR will be in effect. At IDC, we have developed a readiness model that provides some structure to you. And it basically starts with companies who are blissfully unaware. And thankfully, we have seen most of you are beyond that stage. And it ends with companies who are really compliance exemplars. And what we see in the market today is that most of the companies are currently on this stage. So they are realizing that they need to do something. They have started the first projects. But we believe that mo most of them will stop on stage three. They will do just the bare minimum to meet the requirements. And they see GDPR basically as a cost factor. But we believe it's more. GDPR enables you to grow your business. It's not just a cost factor. So if you think about you know, your image, your reputation, your integrity, wouldn't it be great if you could use GDPR as a label to prove that to your customers? And if we look at the market today, and if, for example, we look at cloud providers, they are already doing that. They are taking GDPR as a label to grow their business. And of course, technology plays an important role to grow on that journey. And it basically helps you with three important ways. The first one is it helps you govern the information that you have in your company. It helps you answer questions like, what data do we have? Where is it stored? Do we have the consent to use it? And how can we delete it? And you need to be able to answer and prove those questions when you get an audit. Secondly, the regulation really describes some specific technology requirements that you need to fulfill. For example, data encryption or you know, record keeping. So you need to put technology in place to meet those requirements. And thirdly, GDPR states that you are supposed to use state-of-the-art technology to secure data, personal data, in your organization. But what state-of-the-art really means depends from company to company. What it, not, what it does not mean is that you need to implement the latest, most advanced, most expensive technologies. But it does mean you need to look in the market, need to look at the technology that is available, how much does it cost, what would be your benefits, and you need to be able to justify why you, choose, uh, why you chose uh, solution X and not solution Y. And when you do the technology review, of course, mobile plays an important role. And the data you are seeing here is taken from a recent survey we have done across Europe. And we wanted to know about the investment plans of companies in regard to mobile, against the background of GDPR. 
And we found out that only 18% said, so that's uh, one out of five companies said that they are not planning any investment into mobile to become GDPR compliant. On the other hand, we see that 54% in, intend to invest in mobile threat management to secure their devices, to protect the data that is on there. And I also find particularly interesting that uh, mobile containers are also on top of that investment plan because there are still a lot of private devices out there that have corporate data on them but are so far unmanaged and not under a BYOD scheme. But I want to make sure that these data points and these technologies and functionalities, you don't need to buy them separately. Most of the advanced EMM solutions in the market can provide you with a comprehensive set of those functionalities or have APIs that allow you to integrate third-party uh, uh, third applications. But the data really supports our belief that EMM will be a crucial component when it comes to GDPR compliance. So I'd like to, I'd like to wrap up with five recommendations. I would like to encourage you to really get engaged in your organizations to think about personal data and information governments. And to my mind, it's important that you have an interdisciplinary team that is involved from marketing, HR, legal, and IT. Because everyone needs to bring their own perspectives into the, into the team. And you really have to look into what personal data do you really have in your organization. As we have seen, the term personal data has changed. And that, of course, includes mobile. And once you have done that assessment, you need to look into what technology do you really need to use to secure it. So you need to define what state of the art means for your organization. And you certainly need to do some investments as well. And fourthly, I would like to encourage you to develop an incident process and really test it. Because your customers won't be amused if there will be a data breach. But I'm pretty sure you're going to lose them totally as your customers if you're not able to communicate that breach according to the regulation. And finally, take your employees on that journey because they are a key success factor when it comes to mobile security and compliance. And please keep in mind, if you haven't started already, please do so now and you will have a good chance to meet the deadline in May next year. Thank you very much.